Mm-hmm. Now this is this isn't Italian, is it? Well, let me see the Italian. I think. Oh, like that was manual. That's Spanish. Where's Italian? That's some sort of Japanese language. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are going to take this beautiful bit of machinery through a full triathlon maintenance considerations just all the things that you should be thinking about if you are training for a triathlon and would like to take care of your bike which you absolutely should and there is no better man to tell you that than Dougie Shaw here who is the co-owner co-owner and main bike fitter and general man behind the brand at bike Edinburgh bike, Edinburgh, fitting. Edinburgh bike fitting I've actually yeah. got it wrong I've never got that wrong before in my life but I've popped <laughs> it up here so introduce yourself yeah I'm Dougie uh, I own and operate Edinburgh bike fitting uh, with Elliot, the mechanic in the background, who we're going to be noising up in a minute to come and help us with this job. Um, yeah, today Burgess has uh, come down, we're going to have a look at if you are a triathlete and you want to look after your bike, what are the sort of things that you want to think about. So chain, cassette, how to look after that, how to clean it down, and how to just kind of generally make sure that you're not dropping your chain and getting flat tyres halfway through your race day. And we all know triathlon's a bit of a money pit of a sport. So yeah. the last thing you want to be doing is riding a bike you've invested, spent money in, and then making mistakes that might depreciate the investment. Not obviously treating it just as an asset, yeah. but from a performance point of view, from a race point of view, from a looking after everything, you want to be taking care of these things. And that is what we are here to take you through today. But before we do that, a couple of things to request from you. First of all, as this is such a good looking bike and we are such good looking men, <laughs> you should probably like the video immediately. Thank you very much. Secondly, please do make sure that you have subscribed if you have not yet already and comment down below with any thoughts, feelings or additional queries you have about how to look after your bike. A lot of this will translate over to roadies as well, but I don't want to start a roadie v triathlon more in the comment section just yet. So we'll leave that to you guys to do. So moving on, we are going to move into point number one, which is how to look after your general drivetrain region. So we are going to kick things off as if we had just come in from a long ride and want to show our beautiful bikes some golem like love apparently in that strange position I've defaulted to. But this is my pride and joy so I obviously want to take care of it from a cosmetic point of view, from a I should take care of it because it's an expensive piece of kit point of view but also from a performance point of view because taking care of your drivetrain, taking care of your bike as a whole does equal watts which equals performance so that's something that we're all aiming to do so we are going to run through things as if you would come through from a ride and want to take care of your bike bit by bit as if you were at home starting with dougie degreasing the bike okay so you've just come in from a ride whether your bike's soaking wet or whether your bike's nice and dry the first thing you'd really want to do is just kind of start degreasing the chain so start at the cassette you're basically going to apply a lever away now one thing I would say is, bare minimum, if you've come in from a ride and you live in Scotland and your bike lives in a garage, then what you need to do is just dry your bike. Don't put it in there wet. Everything will rust. Your bike's going to die. Please just at least dry it. You can obviously go through these next stages like we're going to do, but if you leave your bike like soaking wet in a garage, you're basically not going to have a bike within a ride, maybe two. So please don't do that. From a performance perspective, this is just as important as it is from a general maintenance perspective because there are several areas of the bike where looking after it properly will actually save you watts and therefore increase your performance. Dougie, where are the main issues that people flag on? Well, I mean, two main ones would be either a chain that is like orange because no one ever looks after it uh, or a chain that is like literally dripping with oil, disgusting, wearing down the chain faster than you knows what. The best thing really, if you want to look after your bike, as we've kind of gone through, degrease the chain. After most rides, next thing you're going to do is, is just basically put a nice dry lube on it. I mean, really, shifting's going to be far better. The likelihood of premature wear and chain is going to be reduced massively. You're going to be saving, as we've said, maybe 10 watts between a really well-running chain and a really crappy orange chain. So now that stage one is complete and we've spoken a lot about making things nice and soaking, we are going to go outside and make the bike nice and soaking. Next up, 
we are going to cover the bike in bike cleaner or I'll ask you to spray it down on top of the degreaser. So process so far is degrease, yes. then spray, yes. then I am locked and loaded, Get ready, to the to, chopper. ready to rinse. <laughs> So once you've sprayed down your bike with a suitable bike cleaner, you can then give it a wipe down with a rag. Have you got a rag nearby? I've got yeah, a rag you can see nearby. that in a way yeah, held yeah. that back for so long. Did you zone out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just take the you just take <laughs> all the crap off here. You just want to be careful with brushes um, and anything that's heavily soiled. Otherwise, you kind of scratch the paint a bit. But that's that's the main thing really. And obviously, just watch scratching the uh, the nice brake calipers and levers off the wall as well while you're at it. You can use a nice cloth as well, but right now we've got a rag. It's not that nice a bike anyway, so we just have to... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bottom line is basically, once you spread it down, make sure to wipe it down so you can get all the sort of grime, grit, mud, juice, like any gel stickiness or electrolyte stickiness. Once all that stuff drips down onto the frame, it just gets really horrible. So this is the stage where you can wipe all that off and then give it a bit of a rinse. But before we go any further with this thing, this is a standard pressure washer, which means that the pressure is set to be quite powerful. So you don't want to be really up here, blasting it like this, blasting it like that. You can wear things away. You stripping can, it all the yeah. grease, basically. Yeah. yeah, stripping everything off. So what you want to do is in a confined space like this. Stand back a bit. And stand back a bit. There are some products out there that are bike specific, which means you can be a bit more liberal with it. But if you're using a standard pressure washer, do make sure to give a bit of distance between yourself and said pressure washer. <laughs> Okay, so one thing you really want to avoid is, um, especially with the, the pressure washer turn up to maximum, really avoid spraying directly into the headset area of the bike. So right in here, right in here, if you're spraying in water, like full bore, these bearings are actually quite exposed, even though it looks quite sealed. So especially the headset bearings, really watch the bottom bracket bearings like here. If I was to go bananas there, I'd probably be taking the grease out and maybe just kind of reducing the life of those bearing products, like bottom bracket, as I said, headset. Usually wheel bearings are a little bit more sealed, but I still wouldn't want to be going like deep into there. So just, yeah, just be careful and watch out when you're doing this on your bike. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have degreased the drivetrain, we have sprayed the bike down with bike cleaner, and we have rinsed it down. First three steps out of the way. We're now gonna get it back inside and lube it up with the intentionally strange roadman hand signals because you know what's about to go down. <laughs> Okay, so once you have degreased, once you have sprayed down, once you have then rinsed, we are back indoors here. You can be outdoors at home. I'm not gonna dictate that to you. That is entirely your decision. You'll be pleased to hear. We're gonna dry down the chain. You can use a rag or some sort of blue industrial toilet tissue roll if you have access to any. So to dry it down, just get it as, as sort of dry as you can. Main thing to mention at this point is that this obviously isn't a bike detail. This is just getting everything as good as we can on a week by week, training ride by training ride, maintenance level, so that you're performing at a high level and that things aren't going wrong, most importantly. So, Dougie, what are we gonna do next? Well, we've dried off the chain, so next, what we wanna do is just get some nice dry lube, and we're just gonna start putting on the chain. So, I'm gonna roll it back, and just gently apply to every length. Oh yeah. Okay, and that looks like we've done every length, so I'll go back a few times. Leave it for a minute or so just to let it soak through. What do you not want to do, Dougie? Tell the people. What do they oh, not want to you. do? Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't put on a shitload. Leave it like that and then go riding. That's just going to f*** your shit up. <laughs> <laughs> we've now got to clean my bike again. So that's what not to do, but we'll see you in a second once we've done it again. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we've put plenty of lube on the chain. 
I put a little bit too much on on purpose, but it's okay, we're gonna save it. Um, as you can see, I've got Mr. Rag back, and I'm just gonna start pulling off the excess loop. Now, this is really important, because one of the main things that you really want to avoid when you're riding your bike a lot is not overloading the chain. Um, kind of touched on that. If you put way too much oil in your chain, all it's gonna do is just attract more and more dirt into the system. Um, it's gonna really affect uh, shifting performance, but the main thing it's gonna do is just prematurely wear your chain out. Um, and that means you're spending more money with me, but it's not going to be good for you because you'll be doing probably, I reckon, halving the life of a chain if you uh, if you leave it a little bit too dirty and you're riding it all the time. Uh, so yeah, just make sure, get your rag, wipe it down, nice and easy. So that is a bit of an overview. Any questions, any more detail, comment them down below. But before we go, we are going to give you a bit of an overview of how to take care of your disc brakes, the considerations from a tubeless point of view, and a few considerations when it comes to tire pressure before you are out on your rides. So this all encompasses the day by day, week by week maintenance of the bike as a whole. I guess for me, one of the main benefits of going tubeless would be the fact that there's sealant in here. So if you puncture, nine times out of 10, the sealant itself comes out, fills the hole very nicely. Um, and it means that you can just keep riding. You can, of course, if you fully puncture, pop one of these out on the road, um, but it's not necessarily that scary. Uh, what we'll have a look at today is really just kind of how to maintain your own tubeless setup and, and make sure that you've got enough sealant in there um, yeah, in case you have an accident out on the road. All right, okay, so when you come to uh, setting up your tubeless sealant and maintaining it, it can get a little bit messy. So you see here, I'm just laying down some paper on the floor because it can get a little bit messy. So what you want to do, suspend your valve, take off your cover, now if you've got a nice end of the wheel, it comes with a dust cap to help you take the valve off itself. Usually when you buy sealant um, or any tubeless setup, you, you get a mini tool that will just help you take the valve core out itself. You can use, if you're very careful, some long nose pliers. So what you're gonna do with your tool, you're gonna just let some of the excess air out first, and then from there, start to unwind the valve core. Now, it's going to come out very quickly. When you get your bike brand new, probably the mechanic who set it up, bless him or her, they've uh, probably put the bare minimum amount of sealant in there. And after about six months or so, it's getting pretty dry, it's getting pretty thin on the ground. So you want to just kind of top it up. Um, you really, I mean, you, you can put too much in, but that's only when it's coming out of the nozzle. Every once in a while, I'll put more in my own tires. So from here, I always like to put the tube at 90 degrees, that way it just doesn't come pissing back out when I put it in. Um, I've got a little nozzle, so locate it in here, turn to 90 degrees, start to scoosh it in. Just be careful. This stuff kind of reacts with the air itself, so if, you, if it dries out it just gets really, really sticky. So you really don't want it on your floor, just be careful not to spill it. Um, Right, and that's basically that easy. So I've put some sealant in, and then put the valve core back on, make sure it's nice and tight, and it's ready to get pumped back up. So it's really as easy as that. It's it's definitely, um, tubeless is one thing that people have a lot of apprehension about when it comes to caring for. For me, I've never really worried too much. The only other step from here, you might want to think about just swirling it around a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's basically the only thing you need to worry about. So speaking from experience, I was somebody who was apprehensive about tubeless. Worth mentioning as well that that brief that Doug has just given there is about maintenance, not setting up from scratch. That is a little bit more complex. But as somebody without the complexity of skill to be able to do that, Elliot to my right was the person that set it up. And I now maintain it as Dougie has demonstrated. So tubeless, probably 99 times out of 100 rather than nine times out of 10 will save you if you get a small puncture. I think the clearance on this is up to like six mil or something, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, so yeah. top end sealant really does save you. I've seen little hissy bits and then just seals. And you don't need to break break power at all to keep going. So it's really useful in that sense. So if it's something you're considering, I would urge you to consider it because it is a lifesaver. However, don't come angrily in the comments to me saying, oh my God, you ruined my life. When it does go wrong out on the road, it's a bit of a bad experience. But we all drive and sometimes we're gonna crash. It's same sort of same sort of scenario there. That's the uh, that's the bottom line there. So that is an overview of tubeless maintenance. Pretty simple, something to consider. 
Okay, so you've come back from your ride and you just kind of want to make sure maybe your brakes weren't feeling as good that day. So just to start off and give you an example, right? When it comes to your brake pad and the disc, this is a pad. You can see all of that material there is usable material. So this is brake pad material, this is metal. This stops you, this will stop you, but much slower and it'll make a bad noise and it'll ruin your bike. So, to make sure that you have plenty of life left in your pads, what you're gonna do is just quickly take off your wheel, okay? Pull it off. In this case, we're gonna lift it off, wheel it out, okay? And all we're gonna do is turn the bar, you can see, just have a quick look down there. You can take the pad out, but quite often, even just by looking down inside, you can see if you've got any usable material left. If you want a better view, you can lift the bike up and look in from underneath. And that's basically it. You've either got life in your pads, or you don't. Next, how are we gonna clean them? Elliot, how do we clean our brake discs? So, we need to use a very specific disc brake cleaner. So, any brand, but as long as it's disc cleaner, um, spray a bit onto a rag, and then wipe it onto the disc. Don't spread on the cal uh, don't spread on the caliper. Don't spread on the pads. It will damage the pads. So only on the desk. Wipe it off. Make sure it dries up thoroughly, and then you can put your wheel back in. That is something I need to get better at doing, to be perfectly honest. And I know two people that I've witnessed in the wild, as it were, go directly like this in there. And after watching several YouTube videos, I just about had a heart attack. Look after your brakes and look after you. Don't spray it in there and make sure there's enough pad in there to actually stop you. Otherwise, to quote South Park, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> just to kind of cover this briefly, um, a lot of people kind of come in having never used anything on their bike but GT85. A lot of people also then decide they want to take this GT85, spray it on their chain, and then accidentally catch the brake discs when they're spraying this on their chain. But you literally couldn't do anything worse to your bike. So just a kind of word of warning, anything with a lubrication in it, do not spray it on your brake discs. Do not spray it on your brake discs. Do not spray GT85 anywhere near your brakes or your brake discs. Do not spray anything like this on your brake discs. Do not. Do not. Do not. Do not. You will probably die if you do that. But I, he's taken it up a level there. I was gonna say do not again, but we have we have yeah. leveled up here. Okay, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we've just sprayed the brake cleaner on. We've wiped off the excess, and you can see there's a little bit of crap that's come off on the on the rag. And now this is completely dry, so it's just safe to put back into the bike. So again, nice and easy. Lift it up. Whoa. Destroy carbon wheel. Destroy carbon wheel. Roll it in. There we are. Nice. Okay, so tire pressures. If you have a bike like this and you don't have a pump like this, then stop what you're doing and go and buy a pump like this. Do it. What you're gonna do is spend five minutes researching the recommended tire pressure specifically for the rim. Most times, the biggest problems you're gonna run into would be a cracked rim or if you've got an aluminum rim, like a dented rim on the road. Um, very, very rarely you're gonna have massive problems. I mean, I would say that if you have two soft tires, the biggest thing you're gonna do is have a pinch flat or you'll slide out and crash, which is probably another big issue. Um, definitely you can have this problem Just if you're going too soft. Over, glossed over the severity of either of those <laughs> there really, I think. If you're going too soft or you're going too hard with the tire pressure, there's gonna be multiple problems. Obviously too soft, you're gonna be wasting watts, you're gonna lose traction in the corners because the side wall deforms or if you're going too hard, as soon as it rains, you probably will slide out. So you do have to be careful. Most user manuals that come with your wheels will tell you the, the correct pressure. So in the case of Fergus's Envy wheels, that's 80 PSI is the maximum. So whilst this is 80, that is what works for these Envy wheels specifically, but that doesn't mean it'll be the same with your Zip wheels, for example. Okay, yeah, so general rule of thumb. If I'm going out for a bike ride, what I'll do is the thumb test. If it seems hard, then it's probably fine. And if you can't be bothered with the pump, you'll probably be okay. If it seems particularly soft, if you have this gauge on the pump here, nice, most track pumps come with a pressure gauge. So yeah, just going straight into the manufacturer's manual, working out what you need. And it's as simple as 
undoing the rim valve, just being careful not to take the valve out, and I'm not going to show you how to pump a tire up because it's just too embarrassing. Fergus can do it. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Main point is in terms of the whole ecosystem of preparing for a ride and bike maintenance is if you're coming in from a ride, what do you do? You degrease the chain, you spray it down, you rinse it down, then you dry the chain, then you lube the chain, and you bring it through to your area relevant to where you do your bike mechanic work. If you're going out on a ride, you do the thumb test with your tires. If you've got a track pump, which you should, as we have, as we have made very clear, you pump it up like my glamorous assistant here is now demonstrating. Be careful not to go over the recommended specification for your rim. I can't, the urge to make jokes about rims is so, so high. I'm gonna just try and move on. But nonetheless, that is pretty much it in terms of how you can maintain your bike on a week by week, day by day basis. Obviously, this isn't a complete pre-race, you are ready to go, maximum effort. This is bike detailed, looking sharp, looking shiny, feeling fast. There's a bit more to it than that, but that's for you to probably go to your local bike dealership fitting area, like this one in Edinburgh. If you're in the area, you know where to go. If you're not, and you were within 100 miles, you know where to go. If you're any further afield, you I'm sure. Yeah. You can come anyway. Yeah. Okay, that's not what, not, not what I was going to say, but you can come anyway. <laughs> so that is today's video. That is an overview top to bottom of how you can look after your bike maintenance on a week by week basis. That is pretty much everything that I do. So for those wondering how I take care of the Darth Vader of the bike world, then that is pretty much it. Don't forget to like the video, comment down below and make sure that you've subscribed. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, and do let us know if there's any more bike fitting related content you want to cover. I'm going to be back in here soon for a refit, maybe a crank change maybe a adjustment of my aero bars, yeah. probably getting some hydration system put in here, and maybe even a VO2 max test, as well as Dougie lending me his Moxie readers for some experimentation out on the roads. Thank you very much, goodbye. Dougie's gonna say goodbye. Thank He's you, gonna goodbye. say goodbye. Thanks, bye. And I'm gonna say goodbye again. Goodbye. <laughs>